everybody, Bearded CB82. So today, um, been a while. I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time. But um, anyways, we're gonna go over some of the CNG components or the agility components on the CNG system. Now this is a four tank system. Goes clear to the top of the back of the cab. Uh, pretty much level with the uh, air dam up top. But a number of the things that, well, we don't see it a whole lot. One of our other shops has is an issue with the filter bowl housing. Uh, we've only seen it happen at this shop once. Our Milwaukee shop has seen it several times. And this right here is the filter housing. Um, houses an agility filter, which is part number AFV Alpha Foxtrot Victor 20103412. Now it says 103000024. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, That's the old part number from a couple of years ago. It's updated twice, I think, but uh, the latest part number has been the latest and greatest part number for the past year at the least. Um, but where I was going was the issue that we have with this uh, filter housing is the threads inside will strip. Now this is torque specific, uh, 40 foot pounds of torque is the torque for the filter housing. Uh, we change it out every service, which is 15,000 miles. That's a company policy. You could go the full, you know, do it every oil change at 25,000 miles. Um, or some of the test oil trucks we now have up to 60,000 miles on the four test oils. That's another story for another day. But that could cause a bit of an issue. Another issue which you have is this thing right here. This is a regulator. It is a 12 volt powered solenoid regulator. The truck isn't getting any gas at the engine. However, if we have pressure back here, here's our main pressure gauge. Let's say we don't have any pressure up here. We're down to 20 or whatever. Odds are this has gone bad. Now what you can sometimes do just to get it to the shop, tap it. Sometimes it'll dislodge because uh, it's a magnetic coil that uh, engages while it's running in order to get gas through then down through the line. Now after here it's 125 PSI at the uh, PRD uh, which is this is a regulator this uh, controls the amount of PSI going to the truck. Now we might have upwards 3500 PSI altogether in the tanks and this truck we are at oh just shy of 3100. So there's a lot of pressure. This Whatever pressure your high pressure gauge reads, that's how much pressure you have in here. And uh, 3,100 PSI, if you try to unscrew this while there's gas in it, it's just a disaster. You, you don't even want to mess with it. But anyways, so if you're not getting 12 volts here, first thing you might want to test. But if you are getting 12 volts, you're you're bad and either way best thing to do is when you do have the truck running turn off your main fuel uh, on off switch or on off valve right here let it run out or turn this off which closes off everything from your gas pressure gauge for the truck all the way back so everything coming from here which from here goes to the truck um, drain it out through your filters up on the truck, which we'll go over at a different time. And then you can begin servicing these different items. You might have bad switch here, could have a rubbed cord, whatever. If this thing goes bad, which is your most likely cause, which is why we change them out every quarter million. We're looking at changing them out every hundred thousand. Uh, it's just one of those things, kind of a pain in the butt, uh, really. Especially these lines are all so close together. You're never gonna see if I can get you guys in a little closer. And it's 11 sixteenths. Oh, get the tray pad back out. Uh, sorry about the shakiness. You'll never fit a line wrench in here. And these are hardened stainless lines. Um, I got something else I've been waiting on for a long time. Uh, like I said, these are 11 sixteenths. Uh, should hopefully be showing up next month. 
and uh, we'll help out quite a bit with that with disassembly of everything. You've got a uh, 13, what is that, like an 8 millimeter bolt, which is a 13 millimeter on the head on the back of the regulator. Then you've got two quarter inch bolts holding your filter housing in. So, show you guys what this, well, let me give you the part number for the filter housing, this whole assembly, if you ever have one where the threads crap out while you're trying to unscrew the bowl to change out the filter. And that is uh, Agility part number, or AFV, again, 2010000. Zero, zero, eight. It's, let me just show you there. There you go. It's four zeros and an eight. Um, in case I happen to screw that up. But we're going to take this over to the vise. We're going to have a little fun with it, which is why I've been holding on to it for so long. Uh, I don't know, six months now. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the filter. Um, nice, quiet day today. So everything's parked inside the shop. I don't have a pressure washer running, I don't have the stereo blasting, and nobody's running an impact. Perfect time to get this done. So uh, we'll go ahead and show you what that filter looks like. Requirements for Will It Break Free this episode. One, bad filter housing. One, shot vise. You want to secure that in there really good. An inch and a quarter socket, and then of course an SHLX80A, uh, one of Snap-on's best half-inch ratchets made to date. But yep, inch and a quarter socket is what fits around this guy. Uh, I mean, there we go. So this guy, and we're in the off position. Let's see what we can move. And mind you torque on that is only 40 foot-pounds. All right. Ugh. When all else fails, we go bigger. All right, so the next contestant is this guy, the Easy Red. Uh, full uh, 40 inch extension and an inch and a quarter shallow six point socket. Oh, backwards. <sighs> Boy, that is definitely in there. <sighs> this is an issue when you only weigh. 155 pounds. All right. Well, she's definitely not wanting to come free, but I'm not giving up yet, folks. Step two. Actually, I should say step three, which is going to mean safety glasses are required from this point on. And might as well have some fun with it. Well now, it just does not want to budge, so bear with me. Well, when all else fails, um, and apparently it did not want to break free for a change, you grab a good one off the shelf, and yeah, usually it's about that simple unless you get a bit of oil in there from uh, where they fuel up at as far as getting it out oh there's the o-ring now the filter kit hmm, looks like this now the filter is what you get along with the small o-ring and uh, 
that black line in there that's the other o-ring for the cap so that one just kind of stayed up in there but that's it that's your main high pressure filter then followed by two other low pressure filters um, it's a fairly easy swap out process just make sure you have everything drained because if you try to remove this and it doesn't want to go either you have house pressure behind it which once you get to the last few threads on this you turn this into basically a grenade um, definitely a rocket for sure no I haven't personally seen I've just only heard uh, when I first started here that was one of the things they were very adamant about telling you is make sure uh, but yeah I guess uh, one guy when these were first coming through actually did that not in this company but it was like a Cummins shop somewhere I don't know Wisconsin Minnesota or Chicago wherever and uh, apparently the guy tried to do that tried to undo it got down to the last few threads and BAM like a cannon basically uh, from what I understand as far as you know playing telephone with this is uh, damn air compressor uh, yeah it supposedly sounded just as almost as loud as a tire blowing and I know how loud those things go but uh, there you have it guys um, your agility filter housing your filter uh, and some of the issues you can expect with these guys on that component and that's with the agility system um, we don't have any down here with the uh, side mounted tank so I can't tell you how those differ in any way shape or form uh, we just have the back mounted tanks as you can see so uh, we still got a few diesels like uh, that one right there's a diesel but yep, other than that uh, Hope this was educational for you guys. Uh, Going to be moving into other things as well as far as the CNG systems. I've got a lot of pictures taken. One other uh, and some spare old components I like to go further into on these engines. Anyways, thanks for sticking with me. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Remember, shop safety is just as important as firearm safety. If you screw something up, someone could die. Take care.